About eight or nine years ago, I was approached by a group out of St. Louis called Champs Incorporated, which is a, uh, an organization that helps to develop uh, dogs for the disabled, particularly wheelchair-bound people and people that have trouble walking. And uh, they approached me and said, you know, uh, it takes a long time to develop one of these dogs, uh, 12 to 18 months. And we in Champs uh, don't really have the time to spend all day long, every day, helping to train the dogs. But you have a captive population that may be a real uh, benefit in collapsing the time frame, uh, doing a good job, etc., with these dogs. Would you consider uh, housing these dogs with the women offenders at the prison in Vandalia, Missouri? And I thought about it for a long time, and I was very hesitant about bringing dogs into a prison. I was worried about how the staff would react to this issue, but uh, eventually we did allow it to happen, and it really turned out terrific. And over the years, uh, dozens and dozens of dogs have been trained by the women offenders. They've lived with the women in the dormitory and have gone out to help disabled individuals. And then I retired in 2005, but I thought about that dog program a lot after I retired. And when I came back as Director of Corrections in 2009, uh, I uh, decided that I would ask the wardens of all the prisons if they would consider doing a dog program, primarily because I saw the, pro the profound effect it had on the women in terms of changing their behavior, bringing out compassion, uh, allowing them to do a to be loving toward those dogs were, you know, that's taboo, taboo in a prison. So uh, I asked the wardens of all the prisons if they'd consider doing it, and the warden of the most maximum security prison in our system uh, stood up and said, I want to do it. And on February 1st, 2010, the first dogs from a shelter here in Cole County in Jefferson City, Missouri, came forward and uh, with, they brought a number of dogs into that prison. Well, since that time, there's been over 750 dogs across uh, all, or at least uh, 16 of our uh, state prisons. We hope to get to 18 before too long, and we've made a difference in the lives of so many of pe the families who took these dogs. Uh, the dogs have gone to veterans' homes, to mental health facilities, to children with autism, and to the, actually to the families of our staff, which has been an amazing uh, outcome of this as well. And it's been a simply a win-win-win-win-win situation. First of all, the dogs come from local shelters that would ordinarily be euthanized. Uh, they are dogs that have been sick. We've had dogs that are blind. We've had dogs that have three legs uh, who uh, really had no chance of being adopted. And the guys take them in and under the tutelage of local um, trainers from the civilians, uh, area from around the prisons uh, come in and teach the guys how to do the appropriate training and it makes a significant difference in the adoptability of those dogs. Uh, we really haven't lost any dogs accordingly um, and so the program has just been tremendous. It has helped been bringing forward compassion in inmates where either it didn't exist or it was buried. Uh, it has helped the atmosphere of the prison. It's much more safe it's uh, the, the staff and the offenders have a better relationship. Uh, it's just been a real boon beyond what I ever envisioned to begin with. And I feel strongly that it's exemplary um, as far as prison programming. In, the, in my 37 his, years of history in the Department of Corrections, I've not seen anything like this before. And uh, I hope we've been able to sustain it for a long period of time. And I think it has a adaptability to other uh, agencies around the United States. Uh, the program at the outset, I said the caveat here has to be that it has to be no cost whatsoever, no tax dollars spent on the program. And so the way uh, the money comes is either from the shelters, from people who donate when they see stories about, the shelter, about our operation, from the inmates, uh, it's all donated funds. And from dog food companies, in particular the Royal Canaan Dog Food Company has given us dog food for a year for all the dogs in the system. So it's captured the imagination of lots and lots of people. 
and were able to sustain the program through donations. If you would like to learn more about the Puppies for Parole program, go to www.doc.mo.gov.